Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Oxalic acid is a food item that occurs in green vegetables and nuts. You'll see it in almonds, and you'll see it in spinach, and it is an anti-nutrient. It's a, it's a thing that forms a crystal that's very hard to see with microscopes, and it can be seen with a particular kind of microscope, um, dark field microscopes and other light microscopes that shine light across the field instead of directly at the field. And they form in your joints, they form in your muscles, they form in your brain and your eyeballs. They can be very, very painful and they can cause uh, ADHD, they can cause brain dysfunction, they can cause kidney stones. They're the largest cause of kidney stones. In fact, there's three kinds of kidney stones, the most common of which is calcium oxalate. This is something that people really get from eating food. They don't realize that they get a lot of problems and it can can resemble something called pseudo-gout, which is the name for it actually where you have gout, and that means pain in your toes, pain in your joints. About 50% of all gout starts in the toe, and then the other 50% maybe starts in the knee or some other joint. And, And what happens is the person hurts, and they go to their doctor, and their doctor tells them, oh, that sure looks like the gout, or uh, something that is gout-related. It's a painful condition, uh, gout is, that looks like oxalate. And so they're often confused. Now, the doctor may run a test called a uh, uric acid test for gout, when actually oxalic acid in urine would be a better test to run than uric acid in blood, and they could tell the difference. Um, This is something that can very easily be done, and it it can occur. You can also ask the person, if it's a family member, what have they been eating? And if they've been eating a lot of almond flour, a lot of almonds, a lot of almond milk, a lot of nuts, a lot of spinach, a lot of green vegetables, especially the very hearty, thick, strong green vegetables like kale and, and other types of green vegetables. Not, not necessarily the, the thin and watery lettuces, but the more substantial lettuces and the more substantial um, leafy greens have more oxalates in them. So a person can get kidney stones and pain in their flank, in their back, and they can get back pain and go to the chiropractor and have low back pain and think that it's subluxation or a disc. And in many cases, it's oxalates in a, in a kidney stone. In many cases, it will be uh, children that have autism diagnosis, and what they've got is, is uh, oxalate crystals deposited in their eyes. And children have been known to be so afflicted by this pain that they will gouge out their own eye because of the pain of the crystals forming inside their eyeball. And so this has been known to happen. The condition, again, with, with it being oxalic acid instead of gout is called pseudo-gout. There are some real problems with this because it's in, it's in dietary foods, it's in grains, it's in flour, it's in processed food. And it's, it's hard to get rid of. The more of a carbohydrate diet that a person has, the, the harder it is to get rid of. The strange thing is that oxalates do occur in red meat and other types of foods. So people say, well, you shouldn't eat red meat if you have oxalates or if you have gout, either one. The thing that most people don't know, if a person has a diet that is carnivore for a long time, carnivores don't tend to get gout or pseudogout. They don't get oxalate crystals and they don't get oxalic acid which is strange because the, a lot of doctors tell people not to eat red meat if they have either pseudo-gout from oxalic acid or gout from uric acid. These crystals can lodge anywhere in the body and they can be found with a, a microscope. The problem is they decay after death, so they can't be seen very easily on autopsy and they're not very well easily seen in life either with biopsies because we don't use the right microscopes to see them. They have to use a special, couple of special kinds of microscopes to see it. So you'll see it in kale and greens and nuts and seeds. There are some antidotes to these oxalates. Calcium and magnesium citrate are antidotes to some degree. And now one has to be careful because if you already have an established kidney stone, then taking any kind of calcium or magnesium is a medical liability. Now I've seen a number of both doctors and patients that had kidney stones that were calcium oxalate and they took magnesium citrate and they did quite well as long as they eliminated the eating of the foods that that were aggravating. And so that meant not only reducing all the oxalate foods, which were nuts and grains, but also taking the the magnesium citrate or calcium citrate. And in many cases, they would feel better very quickly. They also had to stop having carbohydrates because carbohydrates cause some real bad chemistry things that mess up the kidneys. In addition, when you go low carb, you need a lot more salt. So another confounding variable is that if you do go low carb and you don't get enough salt, you might have real trouble with your, your bowels and your kidneys. So just know that you may have to talk to your doctor and that sometimes Kidney doctors will not like this very much because it it stops them from needing to do a lithotripsy or a surgery or another type of procedure and long-term management. These things can be beaten fairly, fairly quickly, even if the crystals are fairly large.
it's painful and it's really a, a real problem, but it, it can be helped in, in many cases. I'll also say that one of the great problems of the kidney is the lack of, of long wavelength red light. If we don't have red light that penetrates our kidneys, we're not going to have normal function. So one of the counterintuitive and strange things that we might do for things like oxalate crystals is to give somebody sunlight exposure. Literally have them take their shirt off and expose their back to the sun and have those deep, long wavelength infrared light waves penetrate the kidneys and penetrate the low back and get a really nice healing to the mitochondria and, and help the cells heal. If a person already has blood in their urine, sometimes a sunlight therapy can be really helpful. This is not something that I, I can provide a double blind study for like the drug industry, but hey, you know, who's paying for sunlight? Nobody, it's free. And that's kind of what I give you is lots of cheap stuff and free stuff that's easy to do and that you don't have to pay anybody a rent-seeking behavior for, which is kind of how I work. So we're looking at low-carb, uh, low-seed oil, low-oxidative stress diets. We're looking at high infrared light exposure, not necessarily ultraviolet, but infrared light exposure. People can't always handle a ton of, of ultraviolet light, although ultraviolet light's not a terrible thing. It's a, it's a really good thing. You know, you can burn your skin if you don't be careful. So you got to be like any dog or cat or horse that goes out in the sun and get up and go in the shade when you're hot. And usually you can get a sense for this if you spend any time in the sun at all. You can get a sense for when you're burning. And if you can't, then you got to practice. you got to learn to build a solar callus and understand how that works. No nutritional advice would be worth its salt, huh. no, no pun intended, without somebody talking about light. If you can't talk about sunlight, if you can't talk about light exposure, if you can't talk about mitochondria, then your emphasis is on the wrong syllable, which is the, the idea that you shouldn't be putting emphasis on food and food gurus if you're not paying attention to light. So never underestimate the power of light. But you know, if you're eating oxalates, you've got to stop eating them and you've got to cut them back. It's really important to be able to do that. There are some people that have genetic SNPs that affect their CBS genes and some of their other sulfur genes. There's a bunch of these that we'll, we spent time on in other, other lectures talking about. But if a person has a bunch of SNPs that affect their sulfur clearance, they might need to go on a lower sulfur diet. There is no sulfur-free diet in proteins and in the world of food, there is no zero sulfur diet. It's just not possible to get rid of the element of sulfur. And no one is allergic to sulfur itself. They could be allergic to sulfates and sulfites and, and sulfonamides and other types of drugs, but they can't be allergic to the element sulfur. That just doesn't happen. The idea is that a person would need to, to lower sulfur-containing foods, and usually that's plant-based foods. That's not uh, so much protein and, and red meat as it is uh, getting rid of certain vegetables and high sulfur-containing foods for a short period of time while they get control of this and they get control of their symptoms. The reason for that is that it helps with kidney clearance. Sometimes kidney clearance is very impaired by um, the difficulty with sulfur, sulfur clearance and sulfur compliance. There will be other people that have problems with their, their bile and they need to take care of their bile by taking ox bile and by cleaning out a toxic bile in their intestines by taking charcoal. Charcoal and other types of binders, there's many types and I've talked about this many times in, in other lectures, where they need, to, they need to bind their toxic bile and carry it out of their stool so they're not recycling their toxic bile and giving themselves more trouble. And unfortunately, when somebody comes to me with oxalate problems, they usually have more problems. It's not just one. I've very rarely seen somebody that had just an oxalate problem and didn't have other problems of, of diet. That means high carbs, high seed oils, high oxidative stress, not enough saturated fat, and I mean truly healthy saturated fat, many times not enough grams of protein a day, People underestimate how much protein they need to, to maintain their muscle and keep their, their organs in shape. And then don't forget low iodine. You know, there's, there's going to be people with low iodine that can't really handle much of anything. So realize that integrating, integrating the oxalic acid component into your life may be a little more than the old simpleton idea, which was just don't eat anything with oxalates in it, including, including animal products, which is just not fair. I think it really makes more sense to, to cut out the plant oxalates and, and focus on that.